as we take a look at the odds to win. The Premier League, which starts on Friday, Manchester City away against Burnley. City are favourites. Once again, it'll be four in a row. Four in a row for Pep Guardiola's side. Yep, thank you, everyone. Uh, Arsenal second, favourites. Liverpool third, Manchester United coming in at 11 to 1. Everyone has gone for Manchester City to go all the way once again. Is there any concern, Ian? Except Frank. Well, yes, but I meant on the panel. Okay. Like normal people. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Not people dressed in chocolate. <laughs> Not chocolate people. Uh, Ian, is there any concern, given the number of people who've left, including Mares uh, and Gundawan, that they're lacking that kind of that strength in depth that they've had in previous seasons? Um, well, there are a lot of goals that have gone out of the window with Mares and Gundogan, but as you know very, very well, there are plenty of other goals to be had among that squad, led by, of course, Erling Haaland, who must be massive favourite to be top goal scorer again to follow on from the 52 he got last year. I think the only thing with City, the only the real question mark, and I don't think Pep's going to allow it to happen, is they really did feast on silverware last season. Will they still have? quite that appetite and edge maybe not perhaps just at the beginning of the season but last season they came with a real big charge and surge which Arsenal could mm. not resist and I think when we get to the business end of the season City will be firing just as well again it's, it's a super squad and that already strong defence has been boosted by the signing of Guardiola any concerns, Steve? You of course won a double you won multiple trophies in one season to so then go again there's always, there's always just a little concern. But I think the overriding factor for me to turn around and say, well, you know what, not this team, is because of the manager. He won't let it's it. Just, they, they, they won't have the opportunity. And if he even smells anybody getting complacent or, or not putting it in or whatever way you want to talk about it, it's Pep Guardiola. So for that reason, I don't see it. If they don't win the league, it won't be because of the manager. It'll be unlucky, some injuries, all things that can go wrong. But as far as attitude and going about it, no, that's not going to happen with Pep in charge. Uh, taking a look at the, uh, the starting eleven for City, who, who did this for us? Was that you, Ian? It's interesting you got Foden there. Oh, Stuart did, sorry. Yeah, Stuart's team, that. That is my team, yes. Uh, and I put it as a back three because uh, I think that Stones at the end of last season was much better when he played in midfield and uh, Guardiola isn't a left back, he's a centre half. I think Kovacic and Rodri, uh, or, or certainly Rodri and Jones, uh, Stones will be the, the holding players in midfield. That's a good side. Kovacic I thought was excellent on Sunday in the, in the uh, community shield. De Bruyne, when he came on, changed the way Man City played and I think Foden's a better player than Grealish. I haven't wow. seen Grealish go past anyone whenever I've watched him play in the last six months or so, whereas Foden just gave them a bit more dynamism when he came on and changed the game. The player they need to start playing, because he didn't play well in the last four or five games, and he certainly didn't play well in the Community Shield, was Erling Haaland. Yes, we know he can score goals, but I think he touched the ball 13 times. Rarely when he touched the ball did he keep hold of it. He's got to up his game in the first few weeks of the season, that's for sure. Uh, Robbo, not a fan of Jack Grealish, Ian. Yeah, I mean, he's right. I mean, but that's never really been his game going past people. The amount of fouls that he draws and the amount of space that he creates with those runs down the left-hand side. I, I mean, yeah, I can see the case for Foden. He's a terrific player. But I think in the pecking order, Grealish will be above him. I mean, Stewart's picked a team if he was the manager. But I think the team Pep picks will have Grealish in it. Who are we going? Robson or Guardiola? <laughs> Well, <laughs> when in doubt, you go Robson. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Don't argue uh, with me, Ali. Don't argue uh, with me. I, I, I sure won't, but I am going to start Jack Grealish, though. Yeah. Uh, and, and <laughs> but I, I think when you have a guy like Phil Foden coming off the bench, he just gives you flexibility as to how you can use him. And I don't think that's quite the case with Jack Grealish. You just put him down that left-hand side, whereas Phil Foden can, can come from the right, can come from the left, can come from underneath, can play alongside Erling Haaland. Look, I, I think Guardiola is going to start Jack Grealish, but if he's not playing well, then obviously Phil Foden will be that first man off the bench and maybe the one that keeps the place on the field. Ooh, Ali Moreno's got Liverpool second. Did I? Wow. Wow. Did you mean that?
I, I sure did, apparently. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. And, and look, I, I think Liverpool are going to be certainly much better than what they were last season. That goes without saying. But I also find it challenging for Arsenal and even Manchester United to be as good as they were last year. And so it's a combination of Liverpool being better and those other teams not being as good. And so that all adds up for Liverpool to claim in that second position. Uh, former Liverpool legend, mm. uh, Steve Nicol. Have you got Liverpool finished second as well? I have not. I have Liverpool in third position. Oh, oh no. Right. Yeah, Still I've a got, jump. Where's the loyalty? I've got Man City and Arsenal as the top two. Yes. Uh, with Liverpool third and Newcastle fourth. What about uh, Ali's point on Arsenal? Does he have one? It's, it's possible. I, I just I just think they've made a couple of good signings that will keep them where they are, basically. I, I, I don't think they're good enough to overhaul City. I certainly think they'll compete with them. Right. I just don't see them being good enough to overhaul City. Uh, and I think absolutely they'll be second. The, other, the others have to... I mean, Liverpool, Newcastle will have to do it again. Manchester United, without a proper centre-forward, I, I mean, I'm sorry, they've bought, they've bought a so-called centre-forward, but he's nowhere ready to lead the line. And, again, you can Does anybody else expect Marcus Rashford to be the same player this year as he was last year? Because last year came from nowhere. Right. That, was, that was out of the blue. He had done nothing for about, what, three years previous to that? So to put all your eggs in his basket, that's why I don't think Man United will be in the top four because Hoyland isn't ready. Uh, and I don't think Marcus Rashford will be as productive again. So, uh, where, so where's the goals coming from? Oh, well, all right. Um, Arsenal finished six points behind City last season, Ian. Will they close that gap, considering what they've done in the summer, do you think, this campaign? I like the business that they've done. I mean, when, when, when you asked us all in, I think, you know, something like June the 5th, for predictions. I didn't have Arsenal in the top four, but since then, uh, they've closed the Declan Rice deal. They've got Kai Havertz. Urian Timber played very well. You saw that in the Community Shield. He's versatile. He brings more to the party. So they do have good cover, I think, quite around the squad now. So, I, you know, I think although they haven't got a, an out and out kind of 25 goal goal scorer, they've got a lot of players who will chip in with 10 or 12 or 15. Uh, Erdegaard, Martinelli did it last year. Jesus will get a few when he's fit as well. Havertz will chip in too. Um, they can use him anywhere really in the front four positions, although he's got his critics. So I think Arsenal are going to go pretty well again, although they've got the Champions League distraction this time. Can't see any reason. Um, you know, they're lining. I mean, I like the signing of Raya as well, the goalkeeper. He could end up replacing Ramsdale in goal. Um, that's stiff competition. So, yeah, I think Arsenal can make a fight of it with City, but I don't think it's a fight they'll win again. Would you start Havertz up front if you were in charge, Robbo? Uh, with the play, I, I don't think Eddie and Ketia is quite good enough. He's a decent player, but I don't think he's quite good enough to take Arsenal to that next level. Uh, I would play Trossard. him up front while, Jace, while Jesus isn't fit, and as soon as Jesus is fit, Jesus would come in and Havertz would then drop into that deeper midfield role. Uh, Robbo, let's take a look at your uh, prediction, shall we? You got City first. What's the rest of them? Do you remember? I can't remember. I think Arsenal were second. I think uh, I had them in second position because I think they've got a great spirit at the moment. I think the signings have been good. I think I put Manchester United third because at the moment I'm still not sure about Liverpool. I think they could be a very good side, Liverpool. Uh, Nunez could come to the fore. But at the moment, I'm not sure about their midfield. Manchester United, I agree with Stevie as well that they hit the centre forward's not going to quite be ready. But I think they've got enough players there to score goals. Uh, Newcastle will be uh, just outside the uh, top four positions. And Chelsea, ha they haven't got a good enough team at the moment. And I think Pochettino's got his work cut out. I've gone for Erling Haaland as the top goal scorer. And uh, I think Declan Rice, playing at a better club uh, with better players, could be the uh, player of the year. Uh, Liverpool were 22 points off City last season. Yeah. What have they done to close that gap that you like? And where's the concern? Uh, well, what they've done is what we've been talking about for most of this, the, certainly the second half of the season, but part of the first was that in the midfield, they looked as though they'd run out of legs. Mm. They've put legs in the middle of the park. Uh, it was Lobos Light and uh, McAllister. The concern is defensively. 50, 50 goals they lost last year. Or was it 53 to be precise? I mean, that is ridiculous. Cons considering the back line 
What it had 47. Done. 47? Yes. <laughs> so it's less than 50, that's good. Oh, 47, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just bringing just some smarty pat fangs. Well, as I, I, I would actually argue against that. <laughs> <laughs> facts. But the fact is, who cares about hey, facts? Hey, let's put it a different way. They were rotten. They were rotten, and that went, and that is with that back four. So why will they not so be good. rotten this time round? I have to think that Klopp and his coaching staff have have. Certainly, I was going to say worked with them, but considering some of the performances pre-season, it really didn't look as though an awful lot had changed. Right. But I'd have to think that they recognise that as a huge problem. And the only way to fix it, other than playing different players, which they don't have, is to work on it in training, after training. You know, just, just a kind of George Graham from Arsenal way back in the 80s, early 90s, where... Every single day after training, he got the back four and he drilled them. You think he's doing them. that? Well, if, if he's not doing that, then he better be prepared to lose some goals. Well, maybe because that's the maybe only way 53. he can fix it. 50. What are your expectations around Liverpool going into the new season, Ian? Um, well, the big worry, I think, for them is not firepower. They've got loads of people to score the goals, and Nunez might be one of those. So I think he's got a, a battle on his hands to get into the team with the amount of players they've got around there. I mean, Gakpo could play centrally with Jota left or Diaz left, and Nunez likes to come in from the left. So he's going to have to step up, I think. But I think their real problem is they want to use Trent Alexander, like coming in from right back as an, an, an inverted fullback coming into the midfield, there are gaps left behind. So I don't think they've solved that problem. They let in too many goals, way too many goals, and looked a bit of a rabble at times defensively last season. You know, And like Stevie says, has that problem been solved? There are not too many signs of it just at the moment. So if they can plug that gap somehow and learn a way to use Alex Alexander-Arnold with all his uh, assist skills and passing ability and range of passing in midfield and not leave the gaps behind, then they might be in serious business. Yeah, it was 47 goals, yeah, by the way. Yes. Yeah, that, good, good research. There. Anyway, yeah, well, done, well done, Stephen. Well done. Well done. Yep. Uh, Manchester United, meanwhile, no surprise that Stevie doesn't have them in the top four. He's got a big concern about them scoring goals, Ian. Do you share that? Um, I don't know. I mean, he's saying that Rashford won't be able to do it again. Uh, he might be able to do it again. I, mean, I haven't seen an awful lot of this Rasmus. Uh, Hoyland. We might not see him for a couple of weeks because he's got a bit of a back problem apparently and he might not be able to manage two games a week uh, once he get, does come back. They're just going to have to manage that. But everyone who has seen him is, has been pretty impressed and we're a whole stack of clubs looking to sign him. United have got him. So let's see if that comes off. Mason Mount, I think he'll be rejuvenated. Uh, the goalkeeper is obviously better with his feet than De Gea. Whether he makes as many saves, um, not so sure. But I think United could go well again, but I don't see them contesting the title. I've got a feeling this lad Garnacho, the winger, mm. might make serious strides forward. I know he's been used off the bench mainly, but every time he is used off the bench, he seems to make a bit of an impression. I wonder whether he might force his way in this season. Uh, you look at it, Stevie, you always say, you know, defence is going to be the key for success. They've got a good setup defensively. Certainly if you compare it to <laughs> Liverpool, where we've just been talking about. Uh, yeah, but, you know, to win games, you've got to score goals. Mm. And I just don't know where they're coming from. You know, you're, you know, Ian's bringing up Garnacho, which is correct. But then Rashford's better coming off the left. So if you play Garnacho and you but stick... But why can't Rashford it, repeat it, what he did last season? That's Ian's point. Well, um, well because in the last four seasons, he's had, he's had one good season. Because he, he completely disappeared the previous three. He's had rubbish and coaches sudden, now. He's got a coach all of a sudden, who's come in, giving him confidence. <laughs> Aye. Keep going. What? Keep going. What do you mean? That's all I needed to say. You're just talking nonsense. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> so it's just a complete and utter coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a coincidence, is it? Yeah. That Ted Argus come in listen, and he started scoring listen, goals. Odds, Why can you not give the market. coach... The odds of Marcus Rashford producing what he did last year, right. in my opinion, yes. the percentages are way down. Right. Why? Then, then when you, I've just told you why. I've told you why. All as of well. a sudden, he's had. All of a sudden, he had a hot patch. Right. And scored a ton of goals. Great coaching. Ugh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. Great coaching. Shut up. <laughs> 
So are you, are you saying that... No, it doesn't matter. Have I said, well, <laughs> I, I, I don't even know why I was going to have a sensible conversation. Well, you can have a sensible conversation. What were you going to ask? A wee punter. What were you going to... A wee punter. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's no need for that, is there? As I said, look, Hoyland is going to struggle to score goals, right? Mount... Mount's not really a goal scorer, is he? So right. he, I expect Mount to be playing further up the field. And if it's not Mount, you're looking at Anthony. And he's not a goal scorer either. And then you're talking about, you know, maybe giving Garnacho more time, which means, as I said, that means you're moving Rashford from a position where he scored most of those goals on the left-hand side to a, to a central position that he's not as good as. So, again, wh where's this cohesion up front? Yes, defensively, they have been solid mm. and they've had to be right. because they, they won a lot of games by a single goal, either 1-0 or 2-1 last year, particularly at home. So they're going to have to defend the same again because they can't be relied on to kill games off by scoring lots of goals. And you've got Newcastle to finish above them. I do, yeah. Newcastle have got... We're talking about goals here. Newcastle have got goals in them. They had 15 different players that scored goals last season. That's, in, that's incredible. And they've got a guy called Wilson, who, by the way, scored more goals than Marcus Rashford last year. Oh, goodness it's funny, me, how, nobody, it's funny <laughs> how nobody even mentioned <laughs> Callum Wilson. I mean, well, people are saying he shouldn't, he shouldn't be in the England squad. The guy scored more goals than Marcus Rashford last what year. What do you care about the England squad? <laughs> no, I'm, wow, just, I'm just saying how people are not giving wow. credit where it's due. Perspective, Marcus, Dan. Marcus Perspective. Rashford deserved all the praise he got. Right. But at the end of the day... Callum Wilson scored more goals than him and didn't get the same. Uh, why have you not got Newcastle in your top four, Ian? I just think with the Champions League distraction, it'll be hard for them to repeat what they did last season. But I think they're going to be a cracking side. It's going to be exciting again on the tune this year. And, and I think Stevie's spot on about Callum Wilson. I think the, um, the fact that he was on the bench a lot of the time because they preferred Isaac really did set him off. Um, and when he did play, and when they paired those two, Wilson got a lot of goals. In fact, he got 18. I think he was like fourth or fifth top scorer in the whole of the Premier League. And I could see him doing something like that again. If they can keep him fit, of course, that's always a, a little question with him. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.